Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Beach FM, great to welcome back the Waikano Ward Councillor, Jocelyn Pravanoff. Good morning and welcome to you. Good morning, John. How are you doing? I'm fine. How was the market? I know that you went down last weekend, uh, along with, I imagine, most of Wike and I. Great to see the market back, isn't it? Yes, well, I have to say, I think there was a lot more than Wike and I there because I've never <laughs> seen it so big before. Oh, great. And, yes, and so I was talking to Helen, who's, who's the person who's, um, you know, she's been a stallholder there for quite some time, but she's taken on the mantle of, of basically overseeing the whole, um, I suppose, how it runs. And so, so as I said, I think there was many, many store, more storeholders store than I've ever seen before. And I think part of the benefit of becoming compliant is that they all have their own site. They can pre-book it. They don't have to turn up there at 5 o'clock. Yep. They can yep. turn up there at 7 o'clock. And, um, you know, so it was, a, it was another nice day and, you know, a great range of, of market holders and um, it's, you know, really nicely run. And, you know, when I was talking to some of the, the um, store holders, they said there was, you know, no real dis- difference other than the fact that they had a pre-planned site. Mm. So, so it's a, not um, like the old Wild West where you had to sort of stake your claim and and uh, and turn up early, first in, first serve. So it's much more civilised in that regard, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think, though, by the time that most people got there, um, if there you know, were any concerns or issues with sorting out sites, that they'd been well and truly ironed out. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah, so I think, you know, it's, you know, it's a bit of a you know a bit of a tough call, and I think um, you know having the community board involved, particularly the deputy chair, Jill Griggs, and you know working alongside council and having you know a very positive attitude about you know getting this thing done, getting it done as quickly as possible, actually got it over the line with a very very positive outcome. Yes, great stuff, Justin. I wonder if we can talk about council business just for a little bit because we are getting back. If, even if it's just reluctantly getting back into some semblance of usual business. And I believe that the beach bylaw is coming through in discussions, and that's a matter that uh, certainly before the lockdown was uh, a matter of great discussion within the community. Uh, is there any progress on the beach bylaw? Yeah, so as you, as you mentioned, before lockdown, there, were, there was quite a lot of consultation in terms of meeting with community groups. There was an online survey. And today, the results of that were presented to to councillors, and from here on in there, so that was basically the first phase of it. And so from here on there, and there will be more detail around um, about uh, around progressing it, and it, it has to be completed by the end of June next year. So I think the overall messages that have come from you know from the majority of people is that it's actually pretty good. There's a few little tweaks that need to happen. Um, other than the fact that um, compliance needs to, to really happen. And that's actually a really difficult thing to manage because often you've got to catch a person red-handed and often mm. it's the enforcement officer catch a person red-handed to be able to, to do anything about it. So I think as, um, well, I, well, I personally want um, to have a lot of good conversations around how you can you know, actually work around that and actually find some good solutions to be able to ensure that people are keeping to what, you know, what our, all, all our communities actually want. So is the old one expiring on, in June of next year? Yes, it is, yes. And so so Council have very wisely started this process very early in the piece. So the first conversation started um, last December um, because they know that there's, there's lots of stuff going on there. So it's not only KCDC who um, has jurisdiction over the over the the beach and the and the sand dunes, but there's also Greater Wellington and there's also Dock. And so there's also conversations that have to occur amongst all those three parties as well to figure out, you know, how everything fits together and how everything will work. So that's quite complicated, isn't it, with three different uh, jurisdictions, yes. really. All of them, uh, of course, have got their own priorities and their own agendas, and yes. it must be quite difficult melding all of that together together with the community. Yes, yes. So I suppose, so DOC, you know, their main interest is in the um, Waikanae Estuary Reserve, um, that dock land, course, yes. Waikanae, yeah, the reserve there. And then basically from um, the the 
high water mark down to the sea, that's actually Greater Wellington. Um, but KCDC has an oversight there in terms of public um, safety. But then above that high water mark, it's actually KCDC. So that's the June space. So it's, it, as I said, it's great that council started these, these conversations really, really early on in the piece. And, and um, obviously COVID-19 lockdown slowed this down. But you know, I'd like to think that, well, in fact, I'm sure that there will be enough time to have mm. some really good, good solid conversations with a lot of people in our community. It does mean, though, that COVID-19 has compressed the process. Uh, and as you say, good that it was started early. But how is yeah. that uh, affecting other council business? I know there's various priorities. One of the things people don't realise is that central government have got an enormous amount of influence on local government in terms of making, uh, making demands on local government. Usually it's not being financed, by the way. But um, those demands tend to come with timelines and we've virtually lost two or three months of usual work. Uh, are those timelines still being imposed on council? So, so in terms of that, there's quite a lot of reporting that needs to occur and so, so council needs to do that but there's actually no funding from, you know, from other organisations to pay for that. And then I also, so during lockdown, a lot of KCDC staff, including some of the senior managers, were deployed on COVID-19 activities, which meant they weren't doing their jobs, so they mm. had to be backfilled, and other people had to be backfilled. So there just weren't literally um, a lot of KCDC staff on the, on the ground to be able to do stuff. Um, so everyone was working either work, everyone was working at home, yeah. but sometimes it wasn't necessarily on 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 you know the job that they normally do. And those council staff who were effectively working for central government as part of the emergency response, were they being funded by central government? I don't actually know about that. It's a actually. good question though, isn't it? It is, it is, it is, it is. Some of it was looking at, um, I suppose, the, having oversight for what we're doing here in Kapiti. So, uh, you know, one could argue that maybe that didn't need to happen, but then again, um, it's actually helping other mm. departments out who, who needed to have that oversight as well. Great stuff. Well, OK. That, so the beach bylaw is, uh, is moving on, or the consultation, we'll see more about that in the very near future. What else is happening in the village, Jocelyn? So, so in, the, in the village, there's, there's been a lot of talk over the last year or two about um, the Three Waters Review and the, and the Three Waters Project, and... Um, the Department of Internal Affairs have just very, very recently released a um, basically a big funding opportunity for for councils to um, submit to it, and so um, you know there's a, it's quite a complex process, and I think you know a case of where um, I think councils that assign an MOU and then which we've got to submit by the end of August, and then. Um, you know, look at what our priorities are. I think it's funding that has to happen within the first year, I and mean, then further down the line, long term, there's maybe some bigger, um, there's, there's some um, bigger collaboration that needs to occur with other areas. What's your view on that? On, on the need, for, or possibly the imposition, might be a better way of putting it, uh, of collaboration with other areas, because traditionally, Carpenter yes. has done its own thing, hasn't it? Yes, yes. So I think it's. Um, so I, I would actually want to see what was being presented first. But I've, you know, certainly I know when there was talk of amalgamation with Wellington, I was, you know, I was very hesitant about about that because. First of all, we're at the northern end of the of the um, of the area, and you know we're very small in comparison to Wellington. And you know, having the opportunity to have your voice heard um, is actually pretty minimal. So you know, I, you know, I, I know, you know, when this happens, I'll go in there with an open open mind. But um, you know, certainly we need to look at you know how it would work and what what the benefits are for Kapiti mm -hmm. are. So we've got to look at the documents very, very carefully. And yeah. do you think that that is a decision that the community should have a voice in? Oh, I'm sure they will do. Yes, yes, I'm sure they will do. Right. And interestingly, that voice is being heard in different ways recently, uh, virtually. It's interesting yeah. the way the lockdown has affected the way we do things. And that includes the way the council's getting consultation, isn't it? 
Yes, yeah, so, um, so during lockdown, you know, we had a lot of councillors and community board members, we had a lot of Zoom meetings. And um, so when we went back to council, um, they actually improved the system we had there. So previously, council meetings were being recorded, uh, sorry, were being um, viewed live streamed, but now they've got a facility of where they're now being recorded and people can make submissions um, via, I assume it's via Zoom, via Zoom from the private, from the company of their own homes. Yeah. And that will be no doubt rolled out um, a bit later in the year when the long term, um, or maybe earlier next year when the long term plan um, submissions are able to be submitted on. And so as, as council staff or as elected members, we can also Zoom into a meeting mm. if you're not able to be there or if you're sick, which has actually happened a couple of times, and be part of that meeting if it's, if it's around the council table. So um, it's it, it, you know, much more enabling for a lot of people yeah. who can't necessarily get to a certain place at a certain time and they're not missing out, but saying that there are probably some people in our communities who, who would struggle with the technology. That's right. Um, but at least it's another avenue, and for yeah. those that it suits, it certainly is a, a real opportunity. Well, it's been yeah. great to have the opportunity of yeah. speaking to you today, Jocelyn. Thank yeah. you very much for your yeah. time. Much yeah, appreciated. Lovely. lovely to talk again, John. 106.3 BGFM.